So I realized until I do what God wants me to do, I won't be able to do anything. Um, I haven't spoken as much in the recent months because I realized I haven't been willing to say what it is that I'm supposed to say. Instead, I've been looking for another message. And I'm here to explain to you that until you do what God wants you to do, you're not going to be able to do anything at all. You might make a few steps forward, but you're going to take a few steps backward as well. You might be able to accomplish a few small goals, but you're never going to accomplish the big thing. So what I want to talk about now is the fact that we all have to learn how to wait on God and wait on him with integrity. You see, some of us are waiting, but then we're doing things behind the scenes to speed up the process or to jump in line or to, you know, in many ways, lie or cheat. You know, Jacob in the Bible uh, wanted to marry Rachel. So he went to go live with his cousin uh, and he saw Rachel and fell in love with her. And the agreement was for him to work for seven years and then he would be able to marry Rachel. Well, he worked the seven years and unfortunately, Rachel's father gave him Leah. And then he told him, you got to work another seven years for Rachel. So he worked another seven years. He got Rachel, but he didn't really love Leah. And so guess what? The one that he did not love actually got the blessing. She had a son. She had another son. Rachel didn't have any children at this particular time. And then finally, Rachel had, I mean, Leah had Judah. Yes, she gave birth to Judah. And we know that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Rachel eventually, eventually had, uh, had a son. But because of Jacob's treatment of Leah, I believe that his entire family suffered um, unnecessarily. So I want you to be careful how you treat the blessings that God gives to you while you are waiting. I want you to be careful how you treat that job that, you know, it may not be paying you a lot, but it's paying your bills. I want you to be careful how you treat that opportunity. It may not be what you want it to do, but it's the thing that is going to get you to where you want to be. Be very careful how we treat the things that God gives us during our waiting period. The other thing I want to talk to you about and this is very important. While you are waiting, I want you to wait with integrity. Don't lie. Now, this is a thing that I have not said that I know I was supposed to say, but I'm going to go on and say it now. There's a whole lot of people who do not want to get vaccinated, um, don't want to wear a mask, um, and yet you have a fake vaccine card. That's not waiting with integrity. If you don't want to get vaccinated, stand on that. If you don't want to wear a mask, stand on that. Now, chances are you're going to have to stay at home. But don't lie your way to where you think it is you're supposed to be. Now, if you stay home, chances are God has something for you there. Maybe there's a business he wants you to create. Maybe there's something that he wants you to do. Maybe there's a message that he wants to give you. But don't lie your way there. And it's not just about vaccines and masks. It's about job opportunities. I remember many, many, many years ago, a very good friend of mine, uh, she was on her uh, uh, walk with Christ and on her walk towards just living a new life of freedom and truth and in Christ. And she said a very good friend asked her to write a job recommendation for her um, so that she could get this job basically that she was um, looking after. And she wanted my friend to say in the letter that she had worked for her because she had a business and so on and so forth. And normally any of us, most of us, if we had a very good friend who needed a job and all we had to do was write them a letter of recommendation saying, yes, she worked for me, so on and so forth. And, you know, so we could help that friend get that job and get out of homelessness, get out of joblessness and so on and so forth. Most of us would do that. And I probably would have done it until that day when my friend explained to me, she said, Lynn, I can't do it. She said, let me explain to you why. She said, because 
if my friend gets the job based on a letter that I write that is based on a lie, then I cannot give God the glory. The only person I'll be able to give the glory to is Satan because God does not bless lies. So while you are trying to get to the next level, while you are waiting on your next thing, don't lie your way to uh, what you feel is your will. Don't lie your way there. Let's learn how to wait on God and let's learn how to wait on God with integrity. There's another thing I want to talk to you about. Some of us are waiting on that opportunity. You're waiting on, um, you, you've been let in the door, but you don't think they see you yet. You have been given, um, you know, one set of keys, but maybe you want 10 sets of keys. Maybe you want more opportunities to show what you can do. And you're getting a little bit impatient because you have gotten in the door and all they're letting you do maybe is answer the phone, but you want to run the whole office. I remember when I first went to go work for Russell Simmons, um, I got in the door and I stayed uh, uh, where I was with integrity until God saw fit for me to be promoted into a position. And guess what? I ended up running the organization. So if you are in the door, know that God has a plan for you. Don't get impatient because you see other people getting promoted. Don't get impatient because you don't have the opportunity that you think you're supposed to have right now. Don't get impatient and definitely do not get jealous of other people who you see moving and growing and doing the things that you think you should be doing at this particular time. Wait on God and wait on him with integrity. Wait on him with integrity. Now, don't stay there forever if you feel like you are not um, moving in the direction that God wants you to move. Sometimes you go into a place and you are not there uh, for a lifetime. You do things, it's either for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Maybe there was a reason for you to be there. Maybe there was something for you to learn. Or maybe your season is up. Maybe this is not the lifetime opportunity. But whatever you do, do not get impatient and do not start acting a fool, okay? <laughs> right? I know that there are people who have been in position and, um, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to watch this person for a year and then I'm going to see how they do. And before the year comes up, they get impatient. They are ready to move. They are ready to do this, that, and the other. And the truth is, it's not the time. Maybe I'm not ready. Maybe the budget isn't there. Maybe God isn't ready. And maybe you are not ready. So I want you to learn how to wait. I want you to learn how to wait on God. I want you to learn how to be patient. I want you to learn how to tell the truth while you wait. And I want you to learn how to treat those things that God has given you like the blessing that they are. Have gratitude. You know, so much has happened during this season. So much has happened. Lives have been lost. People have been taken. Um, goals and plans um, have been uh, uh, just aborted and so on and so forth. But in, with all of that, with all of that, we still have the ability to have gratitude. We still have the ability to thank God for what he has done. We still have the ability to thank God. And that leads me to the next thing. While you are waiting, and while you are waiting with gratitude, while you're waiting with, with uh, integrity, let gratitude dictate your attitude. Because if you are waiting and you are constantly worried about who didn't do what, if you are waiting and you are constantly worried about what you don't have, if you are waiting and you are constantly worried about uh, you know, the thing that you wanna have but that's not here yet, then it's going to affect your behavior. And your behavior and your energy, you know, people, uh, can lie, but energy cannot. Energy does not lie. Your energy is going to speak for you. Before you walk in that room, your energy is going to speak for you. Before you open your mouth, your energy is going to speak for you. So the way to dictate and mandate that your energy is at an all-time high so that you don't miss out on anything that God has for you, the way to do that is to make sure that you have an attitude of gratitude. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for what I have. Thank you, God, for giving me the ability to take care of this small thing while I wait on the big thing. Thank you, God, for teaching me what I need to learn while I wait. Thank you, God, uh, for giving me 
uh, stewardship over the things that I have. Thank you, God, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, God, for allowing me to wake up. Thank you, God, for allowing me to see, to speak, to teach, to hear, to love. Thank you, God. Thank him. I promise you, if you keep on thanking him, if you keep on waiting on him, and if you do it with integrity, then God has a plan for you. Trust me.